Hi team, Damien here. Uh, today I want to have a bit of a chat about something and then I'm going to do a demonstration. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is financial plans and financial advisors. Now, I'm going to be really careful here what I say because property investment advice is unregulated and financial advice is regulated. So I'm just making a broad statement about some stuff and your individual circumstances vary and I'm not a licensed financial planner and all that stuff, right? But here's the thing. Financial, did you know that financial planners and financial advisors don't provide advice on real estate investment? But yet, real estate investment is where the big returns are, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. So, there's a lot of people out there who go to their financial planner and financial advisor seeking something to do with their money, and they end up putting it into shares and other things, and, and some do okay, but really it's nothing compared to what's possible with real estate, and I'm gonna show you why. So watch the rest of this video. Okay, so let's say we had $100,000, what could we do with that money? Well, the first thing we can do, number one, is do nothing. Now, if we did nothing with $100,000, it would sit in the bank, right, for a period of time, and it would probably end up being maybe $120,000 of compounding interest at three or 4%. That's not gonna set the world on fire. Now, if you go see a financial planner and invest that money in shares or manage funds, that financial planner might tell us to uh, do that and they might say that we're going to get 7%. Now, if you know what, um, if, you know the, if you've heard of the 710 rule, the 710 rule says that in seven years, if you increase something by 10% for seven years, it'll double. Or if you increase something by 10% for, sorry, 7% for 10 years, it'll double, right? So we put our 100 grand in this fund and it gets 7%, right? And it ends up being 200 grand after that period of time, which is about 10 years, right? So 10 years. Uh, if we put it just in savings, after 10 years, we get about that. Now, if the third thing we could do though is real estate, right? And if we do real estate, let's do a conservative real estate investment and let's buy a property for $400,000, okay? And let's put in a $80,000 deposit, which is 20%, and pay 20 grand in stamp duty. So 80 is going into the property and 20, is going into stamp duty costs, etc. All right, and then therefore our mortgage would be three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Now, what would happen in that same ten years? Well, if we did this any time in the last fifty years, bought a property at that point in a capital city of Australia, in the last fifty years, in ten years, that property would have doubled in value. So that property would be worth eight hundred thousand dollars. Now, if we had interest-only loan the whole time and we rented the property out for four hundred per week at the start, because that corresponds with the, roughly with the value, okay, then the property would be renting for 800 per week, and if it was interest only the whole time, the loan would still be there at 320, but the equity would be $480,000, $480. So what do you want? Do you want 480? Do you want 120 for doing nothing putting in a savings account? Do you want 200 for listening to your financial advisor and putting in a well-performing managed fund? Or do you want 480? But we can go even further. Let's change the color. Now, a, a hardcore but smart property investor would actually go and buy two properties, each for the same amount, 400, Okay, and what they would do is get into each of those by the skin of their teeth, right? So they're gonna put a minimum deposit in, 5%, pay stamp duty, and pay mortgage insurance. So the mortgage is gonna be $380,000, $380,000. Rent them out for 400 per week, no problem at all, okay? Now why would we do a crazy thing like that? Well, let's just see what happens to that portfolio in that same time if we did this any time in the last 50 years, okay? We've now got two properties. Each property is now worth 800K, renting for 800 per week, and we've had interest only the whole time, and our mortgage is 380. Right? Now, the equity in each of those properties is $420,000. $420,000. And when I add those two together, what do I get? What I get is 420 plus four is $840,000. $840,000. So what do you want? Do you want to put your, do nothing and be conservative because you're conservative and put your money in a savings account and get like maybe 120 over 10 years? Do you want to put your money in a managed fund and maybe you know get 7% and double it in 10 years, get 200 grand? Do you want to put it in one property and not pay mortgage insurance, do an 80% loan and sit on it? Well, then you're going to do much better than savings at 480. 
But if you're really serious and get right into it, look at what look at what's possible. And the reason why that is possible is this thing we call leverage. Leverage. Okay. It's a financial term they don't teach you at school, but basically what we're doing over here is we're taking our hundred grand and we're turning it into eight hundred grand worth of asset. And we're holding that in the market, and that's why we're getting such a great result. Now, if you're gonna do that leverage, would you do it on shares? Not on your life. You know, too volatile, too crazy. But residential homes in capital cities of Australia, those capital cities are always going to exist and people are always going to need residential homes. This is why the banks will lend you up to 95% for a house, but they won't lend you, they'll lend you barely anything on shares, maybe 30% of your share portfolio. And you know, commercial property, they'll lend you less. They love residential property because it's so safe. If you've ever heard of the expression, safe as houses, now you know why. That's all for me today. Cheers.